call him is a secret of my own and Binker is the reason why I never feel alone playing in the nursery sitting on the stair whatever I'm busy at Binker will be there oh daddy is clever he's a clever sort of man and mummy is the best since the world began and nanny is nanny and I call her nan but they can't see Binker Binker's always talking, because I'm teaching him to speak. He sometimes likes to do it in a funny sort of squeak, and he sometimes likes to do it in a hoodling sort of roar. And I have to do it for him, because his throat is rather sore. Oh, Daddy is clever. He's a clever sort of man. And Mummy knows all that anybody can, and Nanny is Nanny, and I call her Nan. But they can't see Binker. Binker's brave as lions when we're running in the park. Binker's brave as tigers when we are lying in the dark. Binker's brave as elephants. He never, never cries, except like other people when the soap gets in his eyes. Oh, Daddy is Daddy. He's a Daddy sort of man, and Mummy is as Mummy as anybody can, and Nanny is Nanny, and I call her Nan. But they're not like Binker. Binker isn't greedy, but he does like things to eat. So I have to say to people when they're giving me a sweet, Oh, Binker wants a chocolate, so could you give me two? And then I eat it for him, because his teeth are rather new. Well, I'm very fond of Daddy, but he hasn't time to play. And I'm very fond of Mommy, but she sometimes goes away. And I'm often cross with Nanny when she wants to brush my hair. But Binker's always Binker. And is certain to be there. I've had my supper, and had my supper, and had my supper and all. I've heard the story of Cinderella and how she went to the ball. I've cleaned my teeth and I've said my prayers, and I've cleaned and said them right. And they've all of them been kissed me lots, and they've all of them said good night. So here I am in the dark, alone, and there's nobody here to see. I think to myself, I play to myself, and nobody knows what I say to myself. Here I am, in the dark, alone. What is it going to be? I can think whatever I like to think. I can play whatever I like to play. I can laugh whatever I like to laugh. There's nobody here but me. I'm talking to a rabbit. I'm talking to the sun. I think I'm a hundred. I'm one. I'm lying in a forest. I'm lying in a cave. I'm talking to a dragon. I'm brave. I'm lying on my left side. I'm lying on my right. I'll play a lot tomorrow. I'll think a lot. Tomorrow, I'll laugh a lot. <sighs> Tomorrow, hi ho. Good night. <laughs>
This one is called the charcoal burner. The charcoal burner has tales to tell. He lives in the forest, alone in the forest. He sits in the forest, alone in the forest. And the sun comes slanting between the trees, and rabbits come up and they give him good morning. And rabbits come up and say, beautiful morning. And the moon swings clear of the tall black trees, and owls fly over and wish him good night quietly over to wish him good night. And he sits and thinks of the things they know, he in the forest, alone together. The springs that come and the summers that go, autumn dew on bracken and heather, the drip of the forest beneath the snow, all the things they've seen, all the things they've heard, an April sky swept clean and the song of a bird Oh, the charcoal burner has tales to tell, and he lives in the forest and knows us well. Whenever I'm a shining knight, I buckle on my armor tight, and then I look about for things like rushings out and rescuings and savings from the dragon's lair and fighting all the dragons there. And sometimes when our fights begin, I think I'll let the dragons win. And then I think, perhaps I won't, because they're dragons, and I don't. Where is Anne? Where is Anne? In a cup of buttercups, walking by the stream. Wonderful thoughts which can never be said. What has she got in that firm little fist of hers? Somebody's thumb. And it feels like Christopher's.
cares? I have a train upstairs with a brake, which I make from a string sort of thing which works in jerks, because it drops in the spring which stops with the string. And the wheels all stick so quick that it feels like a thing that you make with a brake, not string. So that's what I make when the day's all wet. It's a good sort of brake, but it hasn't worked yet. There are two drops of rain waiting on the window pane. I'm waiting here to see which the winning one will be. Both of them have different names. One is John and one is James. All the best and all the worst comes from which of them is first. James has just begun to ooze. He's the one I want to lose. John is waiting to begin. He's the one I want to win. James is going slowly on. Something sort of sticks to John. John is moving off at last. James is going pretty fast. John is rushing down the pane. James is going slow again. James has met a sort of smear. John is getting very near. Is he going fast enough? James has found a piece of fluff. John is hurried quickly by. James was talking to a fly. John is there, and John is one. Look, I told you, here's the sun. I think I am a muffin man. I haven't got a bell. I haven't got the muffin things that muffin people sell. So... Perhaps I'm a postman. No, I think I am a tram. I'm feeling rather funny and I don't know what I am. But... Round about and round about and round about I go All around the table The table in the nursery Round about and round about and round about I go I think I am a traveler Escaping from a bear I think I am an elephant Behind another elephant Behind another elephant Who isn't really there So... I think I am a ticket man who's selling tickets, please. Tickets? How many? Tickets? How many, please? I think I'm a doctor who's visiting a sneeze. <gasps> Perhaps I'm just a nanny who is walking with a pram. I'm feeling rather funny and I don't know what I am. But... I think I'm a puppy, so I'm hanging out my tongue. <laughs> I think I am a camel who is looking for a camel who is looking for a camel who is looking for its young. So... Now here are some pool and me poems. 
Wherever I am, there's always poo. There's always poo in me. Whatever I do, he wants to do. Where are you going today, says Pooh. Well, that's very odd, cause I was too. Well, let's go together, says Pooh, says he. Let's go together, says Pooh. What's twice eleven, I said to Pooh. Twice what, said Pooh to me. I think it ought to be twenty-two. Well, that's just what I think myself, said Pooh. It wasn't an easy sum to do, but that's what it is. Said Pooh, said he, that's what it is, said Pooh. Let's look for dragons, I said to Pooh. Yes, let's, said Pooh to me. We crossed the river and found a few. Yes, those are dragons, all right, said Pooh. As soon as I saw their beaks, I knew. That's what they are, said Pooh, said he. That's what they are, said Pooh. Let's frighten the dragons, I said to Pooh. That's right, said Pooh to me. I'm not afraid, I said to Pooh. And I held his paw and I shouted, Shoo, silly old dragons. And off they flew. I wasn't afraid, said Pooh, said he. I'm never afraid with you. So wherever I am, there's always Pooh. There's always Pooh in me. What would I do, I said to Pooh, if it wasn't for you? And Pooh said, true. It isn't much fun for one, but two can stick together, says Pooh, says he. That's how it is, says Pooh. There are lots and lots of people who are always asking things, like dates and pounds and ounces and the names of funny kings. And the answer's either sixpence or a hundred inches long. And I know they'll think me silly if I get the answers wrong. So Pooh and I go whispering, and Pooh looks very bright and says, well, I say sixpence, but I don't suppose I'm right. And then it doesn't matter what the answer ought to be, because if he's right, I'm right. And if he's wrong, it isn't me. Twice times. There were two little bears who lived in a wood, and one of them was bad, and the other was good. Good bear learned he's twice times one, and bad bear left all his buttons undone. They lived in a tree when the weather was hot, and one of them was good, and the other was not. Good bear learned he's twice times two, but bad bear's thingamies were worn right through. They lived in a cave when the weather was cold. And they did, and they didn't do what they were told. Good bear learned he's twice times three, but bad bear never had his handkerchief. They lived in a wood with a kind old aunt, and one said, yes, am and the other said, shan't. Good bear learned he's twice times four, but bad bear's nicotis were terrible tore. And then quite suddenly, just like us, one got better, and the other got worse. Good bear muddled his twice times three, but bad bear coughed in his handkerchief. Good bear muddled his twice times two, but bad bear's thingamies looked like new. Good bear muddled his twice times one, but bad bear never left his buttons undone. There may be a moral, though some say not. I think there's a moral, though I don't know what, but if one gets better as the other gets worse, these two little bears are just like us. For Christopher remembers up to twice times ten, but I keep forgetting where I put my pen. P.S. So I have had to write this one in pencil. Christopher, Christopher, where are you going? Christopher Robin Just up to the top of the hill Upping and upping until I am right on the top of the hill Said Christopher Robin Christopher, 
The king of Peru, who was emperor too, had a sort of a rhyme which was useful to know. If he felt very shy when a stranger came by, or they asked him the time when his watch didn't go, or supposing he fell by mistake down a well, or he tumbled when skating and sat on his hat, or perhaps wasn't told till his porridge was cold, that his breakfast was waiting, or something like that. Oh, whenever the emperor got into a temper or felt himself sulky or sad, he would murmur and murmur until he felt firmer. This curious rhyme, which he had. Eight eights are sixty-four, multiply by seven. When it's done, carry one and take away eleven. Nine nines are eighty-one, multiply by three. If it's more, carry four, and then it's time for tea. So, whenever the queen took his armor to clean, and she didn't remember to use any starch, or his birthday in May was a horrible day, being wet as November and windy as March, or if sitting in state with the wise and the great, he just happened to hiccup while signing his name, or the queen gave a cough <coughs> when his crown tumbled off, and he bent down to pick up a pen for the same. Oh, whenever the emperor got into a temper or felt himself awkward and shy, he would whisper and whisper until he felt crisper this odd little rhyme to the sky. Eight eights are eighty-one, multiply by seven. If it's more, carry four and take away eleven. Nine nines are sixty-four, multiply by three. When it's done, carry one and then it's time for tea. No one can tell me. Nobody knows where the wind comes from, where the wind goes. It's flying from somewhere as fast as it can. I couldn't keep up with it, not if I ran. But if I stopped holding the string of my kite, it would blow with the wind for a day and a night. And then when I found it, wherever it blew, I should know that the wind had been going there too. So then I could tell them where the wind goes. But where the wind comes from, nobody knows. When Anne and I go for a walk, we hold each other's hand and talk of all the things we mean to do when Anne and I are 42. And when we've thought about a thing like bowling hoops or bicycling or falling down on Anne's balloon, we do it in the afternoon. If I were John, and John were me, then he'd be six, and I'd be three. If John were me, and I were John, I, 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 I shouldn't have these trousers on. If I were John, and John were me, I, I think I've got it. Mm. If I were John, if I were John, and John were me, and John were me, then he'd be six, and he'd be six, and I'd be three, and I'd be three. If John were me, if John were me, and I were John, and I were John, that's it. I, 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 I shouldn't have these trousers on. 
Isn't that extraordinary? You know, I've never thought about that before. How funny. If I were John, and John were me, then he'd be six and I'd be three. Isn't that a funny thing? This is a poem about a beetle. Oh, not, not the singing beetles, I don't mean, like Ringo, not like that. This beetle's name is Alexander. I found a little beetle, so that beetle was his name, and I called him Alexander, and he answered just the same. I put him in a matchbox, and I kept him all the day, and Nanny let my beetle out. Yes, Nanny let my beetle out. She went and let my beetle out and beetle ran away. She said she didn't mean it, and I never said she did. She said she wanted matches, and she just took off the lid. She said that she was sorry, but it's difficult to catch an excited sort of beetle you've mistaken for a match. She said that she was sorry, and I really mustn't mind, as there's lots and lots of beetles which she's certain we could find. If we looked about the garden for the holes where beetles hid, and we'd get another matchbox and write beetle on the lid. We went to all the places which a beetle might be near, and we made the sort of noises which a beetle likes to hear. And I saw a kind of something, and I gave a sort of shout, a beetle house, an Alexander beetle coming out. It was Alexander beetle, I'm as certain as can be. And he had a sort of look as if he thought it must be me. And he had a sort of look as if he thought he ought to say, I'm very, very sorry that I tried to run away. And Nanny's very sorry for you know what she did. And she's writing Alexander very blackly on the lid. So Nan and me are friends because it's difficult to catch. An excited Alexander you've mistaken for a match. This one is called Sneasels, S-N-E-E-Z-L-E-S, Sneasels. Christopher Robin had weasels and sneasels. They bundled him into his bed. They gave him what goes with a cold in the nose and some more for a cold in the head. They wondered if weasels could turn into measles, if sneasels could turn into mumps. They examined his chest for a rash and the rest of his body for swellings and lumps. They sent for some doctors in sneezels and weasels to tell them what ought to be done. All sorts and conditions of famous physicians came hurrying around at a run. They all made a note of the state of his throat. They asked if he suffered from thirst. They asked if the sneezels came after the weasels, or if the first sneezel came first. They said, if you teasel a sneezel or weasel, a measle may easily grow. But humor or pleasel the weasel or sneezel, the measle will certainly go. They expounded the reasons for sneezels and weasels, the manner of measles when new. They said, if he freezes in drafts and in breezes, then freezes may even ensue. Christopher Robin got up in the morning. The sneezels had vanished away, and the look in his eye seemed to say to the sky, now how to amuse them today. Oh, Timothy Tim has ten pink toes, and ten pink toes has Timothy Tim. They go with him wherever he goes, and wherever he goes, they go with him. Oh, Timothy Tim has two blue eyes, and two blue eyes has Timothy Tim. They cry with him whenever he cries, and whenever he cries, they cry with him. Oh, Timothy Tim has one red head, and one red head has Timothy Tim. It sleeps with him in Timothy's bed. Sleep well, redhead of Timothy Tim. When I was one, 
I had just begun When I was two I was nearly new When I was three I was hardly me When I was four I was not much When I was five, I was just alive. But now I'm six, I'm as clever as clever. So I think I'll be six now. I think I'll be six now.